Pacho. Uh, oh, you don't name Al- Alan wants to play ping play ping pong with Barbara, but uh, Barbara's made plans to look at some sketches with uh, his ex mistress Kath or his mistress Kathy. Um, so Alan says he's just going to go play ping. So he's just he does play ping. Himself. You know, I'm going to go on record now saying that 35 minutes into this, and we got an hour left, basically. All the other plots, but the jewel plot, really don't matter. Like, they're not bad, but who cares? They're not what you're wanting to see. All I want to see is the jewel thieves. That's it. I don't care about the blind and, chick. And like you said, about... they have a really good plan. They they, they really they do, they, and they have a good plan B too. I thought plan B was a good plan too. Wait, yeah. is plan B the not that plan B. Uh, was no, that I mean, out then? No, I mean, when did that is come plan out? Plan B the the mask. Because if that's the plan B, that should have been plan A. Because I mean, that is insanity. Um, I think that is plan B. Oh man, plan B is here. We bad. get um Jenny and Desi taking pictures of each other. This was another water scene that I thought was a little ridiculous. Eh, I'll allow it. Mm. The night one was worse. Oh, okay. <laughs> but um, he has her hold up the camera so he could take a picture, and she's, she's like taking a picture of him, gonna- like. Um, I thought he was going to take a picture of him with her at first. Well, like he, I guess selfies didn't exist back then. You couldn't. But I'm sure the people had to through. take pictures of themselves. And and I, they, I think something. they had to grab someone and say, "Can you take a picture of us?" I think that's how it worked back then. I don't know. I saw something where it showed somebody like years ago, like taking a picture of themselves. Like um, it was a selfie. Sure, it happened. But, but, it but never did. Just name it. Paris Hilton didn't name it, or whoever named him. So was it Paris came, Hilton? I don't know. I just oh. threw that name out there. Somebody had to come up with that name. I would think, right? Every words come. Someone's come up with it. And it always bothered me, like selfie. When it, a selfie is, it should just be that person. Whenever somebody says, "Let's take a selfie together," that's not a selfie then, because it's like two pi- two people in a picture is not a selfie to me. You know what the British people call them? A royale with cheese. They call them ussies. Did I really? Yeah, because Ted Lasso is asked to take an ussie, and he's like, "Oh, we call them selfies." He's like, "But it's not just you; it's us." So are you excited? So he stole my joke, basically. Well, I'm just saying it's not that you're the only one that thought so it. You don't watch Ted Lasso, but he's telling me I'm as good as Ted Lasso. I'm writer, saying so that if that. you had been, if you had watched Ted Lasso, like I told you to watch, you would have known that was already discussed, and you would have probably brought it up. You've been like, you know, what British people call a, a selfie. And I would have been like, I do, because I watched Ted Lasso. Oh, yeah, with cheese. Oh, yeah. Um, That's France. Yeah. <laughs> um, so here we have, uh, once again, our favorite uh, gang all hanging out here. <laughs> Working on plan B. And uh, you're probably wondering what plan B is. And someone's in the bathroom. So we're only seeing three of the uh, three of the actual uh, and gang what are they even discussing now. here? Well, I and guess they're discussing Plan B. And then Plan B Gould walks out in a <laughs> spot on <laughs> Captain Stubing in a room. Man. Oh, that's that. Like, like, didn't he have to put a padding underneath that? Wasn't that part of this? Yeah, because like, he had a little suit. he had a little fat suit on. Yeah, it was because. Like, because Gavin McLeod Harold so Gould, fat. Yeah. Harold Gould was a little more svelte. I guess like anybody would notice, like, have you lost like five pounds? Uh, yeah. I so mean, he is... to get the mask and hair and everything that perfect though. But I mean, he is not wearing a mask. He is Gavin, Gavin McLeod. McLeod. I mean, who, what? <laughs> this is this is insanity that this was this also, is not this is not Mission Impossible also, 2017. This, this is love. Plan A just to, failed, and he's like, "Oh wait, I got a I got a Captain Stupid man." Why well, wouldn't back this be, in my room? I would have used this right away. Right, this that's what this should be Plan A. I yeah. said that Plan B should be Plan A because he can do anything <laughs> dressed like this. But he doesn't even try to do a good uh, Captain Stupid. He just has laryngitis. <laughs> he just has laryngitis. <laughs> But when he walked out of the bathroom as Captain Stupid, I was like, come on. Like, no one even questions the fact that that I mean, I the, get the like, quality of your mask is amazing. It doesn't even look like a mask. Your eyes aren't showing through the holes. It's like, where's Harold Gould at? <laughs> <laughs> well, doesn't Ox say something? Ha- Harold Gould's up on the deck. He doesn't even ask where, like, he's like, if you're Captain Stubing, where's, he said, where's uh, Steve? Crowler? Whatever. Vernon. Where's Vernon? Whatever he calls it. Where's Mr. Crowler? Ox. Ox just had Come that on. like uh, 
dumb look to him in the face. Like, where he well, that's like, probably why, I'm saying, why, that's why, like this. why you can act like where he just has that. Badoy. Badoy. That's why he plays a good Klingon. Um, <laughs> yeah, because he's got that long, big forehead, right? Yeah. He uses ridges. Here we get um, Rowan and Martin are discussing Alan and lives. Barbara again are having a little walk here. Um, she's looking for she's looking for Kathy again, and he says, uh, "You know what do you talk about?" And she says, "Oh, we talk about men." And uh, he says, oh, "Why don't we uh, look for her together? We can all hang out." And she's like, "Oh, we were supposed to go to the beauty wa- uh, get a beauty wa- uh, get a beauty shop for a wash and a set." So he just says, "I'll just stay up here and watch my hair curl." So yeah. again, it's like another. He was going to play ping by himself, and then uh, he's just going to watch his hair curl up on the deck by himself. You know, Rowan's problem is that he's always, he's, when Rowan and Martin were around, he was the straight guy. Martin was yeah. the goofball that, like, you know, would make fun of, like, he was, yeah. he's the abbot. He's the, setup. He's the abbot he's the of yeah. the abbot and Costello. So it's like, he's not good at the one liners because he's not the one liner guy. The, yeah, he's the guy that's, he's the guy that's the one liners yeah. are like beat. against or yes, fired at. Yeah, yeah. right. So. Then we get Desi and uh, Desi and Jenny going for a nice swim here. Um, they're being playful. She splashes him with water in the pool, and then they get out, and he's uh, drying her off with the towel. And he, she wants, she wants suntan. This is where she wanted the suntan lotion. And we're getting close to 41 minutes into the episode, so we're going to see our first sighting of Isaac. Oh, geez. 41. Isaac hasn't even appeared yet? 41 minutes and 11 seconds. This is Isaac. And how many minutes in this podcast are we? Four hours and 17 minutes? <laughs> uh, uh, one hour and 30 minutes. Not bad. Not bad. We're not bad. We're not bad. You we're- could have said 17 hours. You would have been like, not bad. I could have this edited down. Yes, I, I believe me. There are things I, yep. I'm already H- asking. HR could... stuff can come out again. Or Fuck no, we're that. keeping that, right? Fuck the HR. <laughs> Here's where I told you where she just kneels down. She knew where the towel was. She just got down on the towel and knew where it was. Did he at. not lead her over to the chair? Did she just walk right over to that chair? He helped her out of the pool okay. like, and stepped down, but then she just knew that, that was the towel was laying that way. I guess. Have we already discussed the fact that like she's not blind in real life? Right, she's not blind. In real she's life. not blind okay. in real life, and you said uh, something about. I don't know if you said that off off mic or not about her pretending to be cross eyed oh. or whatever. You know, well, that sounds like something I would say. But there he is, oh. Isaac. First, that's the first. But sighting. so she says she doesn't burn, even though she's kind of like a, a light, a fair skinned person, which means yeah. she definitely burns. And then he says you're working on your tan, and she's like, no. And then she just wants to be rubbed down, basically. They, um, but I can tell you, based on her complexion. She burns. They uh, they were talking to Gopher about missing poker night, and he said that uh, he was with Taffy, uh, tripping the light fantastic. Um, and then uh, Doc said tripping is the right word for his dancing. And then uh, we get fake Captain Steubing walking by with Taffy. And then uh, Isaac says, good luck fighting for second and third. Nice. Doc. I mean, meaning that Captain had stole their woman. And is that Isaac's first line of the night that he says? Or no, I guess the poker Isaac, line. The poker was, line, yeah, was his first line. But it was just like, wow. Man, 41 minutes in. It, <laughs> why bother at this point? They should have just said Isaac's, not in the first Isaac's part. off this week. He was almost not in the first part. Isaac's visiting his mom and his girlfriend that we met a couple episodes ago. Right? Call back. I like that. Thank you. Um, we get Fernando Lamas uh, walking with uh, Roz on the. Um, they're uh, he's talking to her about the movie, and this is where you find out that's guaranteed a million dollars for each of them. And uh, he said, uh, "How much good could we get out of it if we're forgetting a million dollars each? That's plenty of good." Um, but she's again, she's still not wanting to a million dollars each, especially back in nineteen seventy eight. That's like. <laughs> Yeah. 15 million now i mean what what wouldn't you do what wouldn't you do for 15 million dollars it, w- it was a, it wasn't a it wasn't a porn it wasn't anything like that I, she was a, being it was a, i'm not even saying that i wouldn't a, do that for 15 million dollars that's what i'm saying this was like a normal i'll, I'll make any movie you want right yeah. now for 1500 dollars. <laughs> 1500 I'll but for 50 15. million dollars i don't i'm there the list of things i wouldn't do are very short yeah run over a bunch of babies with a lawnmower do i know them but Are there see, any babies I know? It has to be legal because like nobody's going to allow him to do that. It has to be something that legally he can do, but it's disgusting. Oh, then, like, so, then that's uh, anything. I mean, you're not asking me to murder children? 
then I can do anything. But that's what I'm saying. Like, it we, can't, we can't issue to do that because that, would, that wouldn't be real. You couldn't do that. Then there's nothing I wouldn't do for $50 million. Nothing. As long as it's legal. Have your intestines removed. That's fine. What do I need them for? I have $50 million. I'll have someone chew my food for me. So that, yeah, you have to have a colostomy bag and a, oh, a pee bag all the time. Somebody has to feed you, physically feed you as well. Voluntarily go blind and deaf. <gasps> oh, see, now you're coming up with things I don't want to do for $50 million. Blind and deaf? Yeah. Only have the use. One, of, not both. Yeah. It, you can only have the use of your hands or the use of your feet, one or the other. Hands, no doubt. So then you'd be in a wheelchair. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. What am I doing? I'm basically, no, I'm, saying, yeah, I'm yeah. basically sedentary now anyway. So, But now go back to the one where it was, what, would you, what did you say? Sight or hearing? Was that what you said? Both. But he has to choose one or the other. I, or you say both. Uh, no, I said both. But you said one or the other. I'm not doing you, both. He would do one or the what other. What would you choose if you had both. to choose one? As much as I like music, I think I'm I'm taking my hearing. You know why? Because you can read. Yeah, and I can. I, I want to be able to watch TV, and I can still look at the captions and stuff like that. Yeah, that's what I, I think. That's how I think. And that I can drive. I can get around on my own. Like being blind, I think you're you're more dependent on the people just to get you through your day. Yeah, I I agree with you. I would I would go the same way here, Brian. Both. He went both. <laughs> <laughs> He's like I want to be blind and deaf. <laughs> I guess deaf, yeah. Yeah. I mean listen, I don't want to be deaf either, but most deaf. That's uh I, that's a I don't want to be deaf. That's something, I don't want to be most deaf. That's something D'Angelo Barksdale says in the the wire. Most deaf. Most deaf. But isn't there a rapper named Most Deaf or something yeah, like that? But he was just instead of when somebody would say something like, Yo, we should go over to you, yo, yeah, that's most deaf. We're gonna go. Most deaf. Yeah. I thought of another one. <sighs> Have your penis sewed to your leg so that you always piss your yourself like it always runs down your leg oh yeah you would do that for 15 million for 50 million yeah. i'll wear Definitely. a diaper every day I, I mean i would just like with my 50 million i'd build a bathroom that would accommodate my grossness i'd yeah. shower i'd, I'd jump in the shower just pee in the shower <laughs> i'd wear i'd wear diapers and i would pay somebody to change me <laughs> pay somebody to change. i don't need that yeah if I make a 15 mil? I would just strip down and hop in my shower slash toilet. You could hire a sponge girl. <laughs> what if it's aimed up so it's always pissing at his face? <laughs> <laughs> that I might not agree to. Can I put my hand over it and block it from hitting me in the face? <laughs> that was in an episode of Curb recently where uh, he was taking some medicine and he peed so hard. Was that the Jesus that picture? Over and it splashed on the Jesus uh, post, uh, painting in the uh, bathroom. <laughs> As a militant atheist, even I was offended by that episode. I couldn't even believe that. I was like, oh, man, they're pissing on Jesus. I'm like, I wouldn't even piss on Jesus. I wouldn't piss on Jesus if he was on fire either. But I wouldn't piss on Jesus. That, that was uh, that was pretty con- uh, controversial. And that was with the chick with the love handles, where he grabbed her to not fall off the building. Right? Did he grab oh, her? Yeah. That was stomach? the girl. She was from it was Jillian from uh, Workaholics, and he was <laughs> hanging from her stomach. <laughs> That's so good, man. That's so good. Uh, next weekend. New curb, new curb next Very weekend. Exciting. That's so oh, exciting! Very exciting. And I just did the rewatch too, so I'm like, oh, "Did you get you watch?" I got all, all the way through. Yeah, that's why I'm back on the wire. I made it through halfway through season one. That was good too. What you watched, wasn't it? It was fine, but now your your buddy Brett's watching it. Um, so we got Gopher here talking to. Uh, you're not sure if he thinks he's talking to the captain, but it's this is a little fake captain, real captain thing that goes back and forth here a little bit. Are we still in this scene? <laughs> well, we didn't get to it. Oh, we it just it, we just got to the part where he walked by. What have we been talking about for the last twenty minutes? I don't recall the whole the fifteen million dollars. Oh yeah, fifteen oh, million. That was that was Brian's. Fault. Oh, because they were getting a million dollars of film, right? So now a uh, fake stooping Gould wants to have access to the vault yes he's gonna he do says, the swap he says uh how, you gotta prove to me that you're stooping he says open it or you're fired <laughs> in his <laughs> best <laughs> laryngitis <laughs> um this when he's walking by stooping the real stooping comes out now and he's wondering where gopher is at why he's not at his uh post tk427 wasn't at his post either <laughs> tk427 <laughs> was not at his post um, so he's ca- he calls out, um, fake Stubing hides behind the door as uh, Gopher comes out and confronts the real Stubing, and he's like, then it's a whole 
back and forth thing. Of, it, this is uh, talking about Avon Costello before. This is I was just going to say yeah. Costello kind of like, but no, you were just yeah. asking me for this and you did Wait. that. You were, uh, you what, were in there asking what, uh, open what, the vault. What happened to your laryngitis? What laryngitis would you be talking about? Um, so yeah, this was just, uh, this seems ridiculous here. So they're going bickering back and forth as they go back in fake stooping, Sneaks slinks out. out and right there where the uh, front desk or desk where they're at is right near the elevator fake stooping slink uh slips into the elevator there's a bunch of people he butts right in front of everybody and notice he goes right into the corner of the elevator so there's no reason that in the next five seconds real stooping should turn around and, and see, see him. him he should have been at the back the corner of that he side he been, yep stooping just happens to look into the elevator and sees himself yep he's like ooh. And as he gets over to the elevator, it he closes. He's going up. He sees like, it going up, so he runs up to the next floor. I, I would have liked to have seen Steubing run these four flights of stairs. Is it four flights he had to run? Well, they were going to the four. I didn't see. That's going what I'm saying. Decks, they were yeah. on the fourth, right? Yeah, yeah, going four decks. So that would have been nice to see. And now Gopher's still sitting there going, so what was going Steubing on Steubing obviously didn't get up to the elevator before it, before it got there. The elevator was first, so... Fake Stubing has got a little bit of a head start. He he runs down the stairs as real Stubing slowly walks behind him. Like he, he didn't even have a right. Like why didn't he run there? These boats are labyrinths. You could easily lose somebody. But, but why didn't guy, he run there? Don't all this guy would, does is walk straight. We walk straight to the sauna. But he just keeps walking straight, and Stubing's like right behind him, and he knows he's right behind him. He just keeps walking. And- Fake Stubing uh, gets stopped by Julie here. He, get, he was real rude to her, dismisses her, and Julie turns around, and then uh, so she doesn't see the real Stubing, and then real Stubing talks to um, Isaac here, getting a lot of uh, screen time ever <laughs> since he uh, showed up, and uh, real Stubing's acting a little weird to Isaac. Then Isaac and Julie are like, hey, Captain's acting weird. They both agree because they each talk to different weird captains. By the way, they did the great movie trope, TV trope of at least having one person, the real Stubing's wearing the hat, so we can tell who the real Stubing is compared yeah, to compared the to not the fake, real Stubing. The fake Stubing, so, yeah. who's played by both Kevin McCloud yeah, and We Gavin know McCloud. who it is because they're wearing, one's wearing a hat. The water behind them was moving really fast, yeah, I thought. They're at uh, sea. They're, they're chugging. Um, so Stubing, uh, real Stubing... Or fake Stubing goes to the sauna and goes into the second room there, the sauna, and starts to take off his uh, shirt. And this is where we see the fat suit, which is just basically like a white, or it takes off the mask first, which is ridiculous, the mask removal. It's it's Mission Impossible level ridiculous. It, the fat suit is just like, it looked like a lamb suit or something like that. <laughs> it was foam sure rubber or something. Real Stubing slowly walking up to the sauna, decides to go in there. But as he's about to go in there, um, Vernon, uh, the head of the gang, comes out as himself, and Stubing is just dumbfounded. He's like, did you see someone that looked like me come by here? That 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 impression is getting it's getting <laughs> working better. On. I like that. That is good. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> um, then we get uh, Julie and Jenny here. The funniest part, Ju- uh, Jenny, it's Julie. I'm going to talk to you. I'm touching you. I'm putting <laughs> my hand on your shoulder. That so you stuff, know it's me. It was re- that just, I, don't, I know why she did it, but it just seemed really awkward when, when it was done. I just, I blind can't, people make everybody else's life so awkward. Stop being blind. And I'm sorry is, to all our blind listeners. This is part of I, the, I, uh, I was going to apologize to all our deaf listeners, but I don't think we have any. This is uh, part two to the HR episode. <laughs> I am pro blind. I am not anti blind. So they have a little bit of a girl talk here, and uh, she asks if Steve looks as nice as he seems. And Julie says, "If you like six feet tall, dark hair, and incredible hazel eyes," she said just like that too. Jason's got then, that accent down as oh, good as my oh, stooping what? is, and the perfect smile. And, and, he, and, and they she, call him an Ugga, a real Ugga, yeah. Which I think are the boots that Tom Brady wears, right? Doesn't he wear Uggos? Does he wear Uggos? Yeah, I don't know. He is. He was a spokesman for uh, Uggos, I think. I think it's Uggs. Uggs. Yeah. You made me say it. I was thinking I was real. I was like, oh, Uggos. <laughs> like Elios. Uh, uh, <laughs> Elios. Elios. Sponsored. Exciting news. Sponsored by Elios. And Uggs. 
I'm going to tag them in our uh, episode. See if we can get them uh, when this when this one comes out. We'll tag them in this episode and see if we can get Elios to sponsor uh, exciting a new podcast uh, with uh, promo code Andy. You get ten percent off. Oh, oh, I like it. That just pays for the sales tax. That doesn't help anybody. <laughs> And then we get um, Roz and uh, Fernando again uh, talking about the movie that he wants to make. Um, I can sum it all up. It's a crappy script. She doesn't want to do it. She yep. wants to rewrite the opening scene. He describes the opening scene, which sounds oh my gosh, dreadful. This opening like, scene. We, we focus in on your ear. And what was we, it? And, was and a, you're an old lady, and I'm a young cavalryman. It's a sad. And, it's a so tragic. She said this script is so sad. It's tragic. And he goes, "Yeah." She goes, "Yeah." Why'd they kill a tree to to do it? <laughs> um, she said. Uh, he said, "Yeah, I know the script needs work." She says it needs a burial. <laughs> Um, she's she's like it's just better to be back again. And she says if she does do it, rewrite the opening scene like you said. He said that the opening scene is she's an old hag, and it cuts to him as a young cavalry soldier riding a white stallion. He fights a few battles. He has a few love affairs, a couple of soliloquies. Do you know what a soliloquy is? Eh, it's like a monologue. Shakespeare uses those kind of things. Speaking one's thoughts aloud when by oneself or regardless of any hearers, especially by a character in a play. I like that you wrote that definition down. I I wanted to give it out. You're educating people because you know you know I'm usually dumb. I I should have been like soliloquy. I I know I should have went with like I should have went with a different word. Like that's bottle. Do you know what bottle is? Bottle. I don't know. But uh, she she complains about the script. She complains about. She's like. What crappy the, the, director? Like the one would we thing get? you were saying too, back to the uh, close up of his, her fingers tapping, then a close up of her ear as she listens to him galloping, galloping away. Galloping away. <laughs> but she, then she, she's like, Who she would, says, How about a close up of me kicking you in the rear? But she's like, Who would direct this? And she looks at him. She's like, Oh my God, you directed this, right? She's like, and But she's this, like, well, I need to talk to the, the writer. writer. She's like, Oh my God, you wrote it too. And he did. You would have thought they've been married for a while. And then she said, uh, "Notice." She said, "Who do you, away. who did you get to? Who are you going to get to cast as your younger brother, Buddy Epson? Buddy Epson, who played Jed Clampett, and at the time of this episode was seventy years old. And he was also, um, what was that good Buddy Epson show that was on at this point? He was like a detective. Oh, geez, I don't remember now. You're talking, about but I did watch it a little bit back then. He he was producer. like a." He was like a like a Matlock back then, like before Matlock. He was an older guy, detective. Why am I not thinking it? Ooh, it's right there, man. All right, Brian's getting it right. Uh, yeah, I'm looking it up. Okay, um, so again, that was a, the joke uh, to play her. She says uh, he says that he has the body of a 20 year old, and she goes, "Yeah, we'll get to her later." Yeah. It's like an old Groucho. And she does it as Groucho. Yeah, Groucho. She's <laughs> like, "We'll get to her later." She did the cigar. We'll get yeah. to her later. Yeah. And he's like, "That's an old joke." But I'm bump. And she says, "It uh, takes one to know one." <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, "This is fighting," and she says, "No, this is fighting." And rips his shirt, rips and, his shirt. Then she and walks, walks away. away and yanks it as she's walking away. Yeah, it was a second rip. You got the second rip. Second rip. Yeah. <laughs> second rip. Second spitter. From the gravelly road. <laughs> oh, second shooter. <laughs> second, spitter. second spitter from the gravelly road. Here comes um, Brian with the information. Was, Barnaby Jones. Barnaby Madison. Jones. And the Beastie Boys even sang about it. <laughs> Barnaby Jones, somebody say Columbo. <laughs> Barnaby Jones. I like that show, I think. I don't remember much of it, but it was- uh, like Tune in to a special Patreon episode where we do the best of Barnaby Jones. Absolutely not. I'm out. What did you want to do for Patreon? Not what, Barnaby dude? fucking Jones, dude. But, um, oh- Brady Bunch Variety Hour. You were okay with that. That's fine. Yes. Here we get um, Gopher after after Captain says not to tell anybody. Oh, so Captain gets everybody they together. Keep, everybody like young, trying to keep steal an the eye diamond. on yep. the diamond. And Gopher immediately, Gopher goes immediately down. tells the gang that they think somebody's stealing or on the boat that's trying to steal the uh, Star of Kashmir. And. Uh, Minnit. Ninnit. Nah, nah, nah. Why did nah, he, nah, nah. why did he, did he feel like he was getting in with nah, Taffy nah. Yeah. here? Oh, that, totally. No. Yeah, he's like, I got inside information. Let me tell you. And but like, he didn't even get anything for it. He just walked away after he told. That him. is true. So that's a that's a shame for him. Um, where we got here? Really? Are we pausing? Sure. No, no, you guys can keep. All right, I pause it. 
Brian wants to actually see what's going on, so he's giving himself a longer microphone. Testing, testing. Yes, you're very oh, loud. Hot. Very hot. Oh my god. See how they move pretty quick. We're moving along. Don't forget your anal um, pillow. <laughs> oh, yeah. <it's> Jason. <laughs> Chucky. Plenty of room. Chuck, <laughs> Chucky's all fucked up. Chucky's like, what's going on? Chucky was laying under there all calm. It is fun hearing all the ambient noises through the headphones. This might work more often if he sat there too. If you had, a, and then you had your other laptop here with the. Oh yeah. And then where, where are we putting uh, our yeah. guests? I guess that messes up our guests. Uh, right? Yeah. Put the get. Uh, yeah. Or we move this back a little bit. I don't know. Put the guest up there. Look it down. Put the guest on the big screen. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Yeah, we would just have to move the table down, and we could see the guests. I think the only thing was the lighting was bad over there. I was I could, the only. I can work on that. I got light. Um, hold on, let me find this. You should just sit here, here with this on your head. <laughs> like, read your notes with this. Where are we at here? Um, You're gonna cut this out, right? Or is this part of the podcast? Uh, Could you imagine? I'll make it sound like good. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> I don't even know what part this is. This is where Gopher just told them, and he's like, "Part." He's like, "Plan C." Um. Oh yeah, Plan C. Uh, Gopher comes over here, to, 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 to steal the diamond. Uh, but he says they won't get past their defenses. Plan C, and she goes, and he go, "What's Plan C?" And she's like, "Right after Plan B." But you know, they they gave up on the spot on. Captain Steubing mask way too fast. Like you could still use that. You could still f- come on. If you made that, like I'm thinking, you could make a lot of other things too. But <laughs> yes. We get Doc and Jenny, or not Doc, but um, Desi and Jenny here dancing, and uh, they're both sad about Puerto Vallarta because he's he's. I don't know if we've discussed this, but he's getting off in Puerto Vallarta. They, they're on a like we haven't even discussed where they're getting off on. They definitely get off. They mentioned Puerto Vallarta a lot. Pablo she Lucas, they, she accents. Vayata, very she she's and enthusiastically. Said, she says, "Will he call her?" And she says, "Uh, is your brother bigger than me?" So like her brother is like protects her or whatever, I guess. And she said, "Uh, yes," but he said he would still call her. Um, there's too much sound noise from this. Is that because it was all turned up? Because this is moving. Because I think when this moved, we heard noise. And when I have this connected here. You can hear it through <laughs> there. But if I hold it, it's fine. Oh, now you look okay. like a real now pro like, holding your mic. You're serious. Like our guests, and you're like, yeah, I didn't know what's going I'm on. I'm on the sidelines here. Herb, I don't even know. I wasn't even in aisle five. All right. So here we had um, Bar- Barb and Alan are sitting around, and uh, Barb asks if they want to go see a movie. The name of the movie? A fair to mem- remember. That is correct. And a fair to remember. Um, as is, she says the name of the movie, uh, Alan chokes and he says he swallowed the olive. Swallowed the olive, yep. Um, Barb leaves them too because uh, Adrian says she saw it. And uh, now um, Barb and, uh, no, I'm sorry, Alan and uh, Adrian have a conversation about, you know, why why is she with him? Why is he with her? And he says, "I don't know my wife. You know, I've been with her. I've been married to her for seven, seven years. Seven years. But they don't sit down. They don't sit down. My have, God, they don't sit down and have conversation. Seven years. This guy's been yeah. dealing with this woman. So he's How, to, I mean, no, fa- no person should be married to another person for seven years. That is insanity. Is this a seven year itch? Insa- oh, you know what? I didn't even think about that seven year itch. Yeah, I guess it is it's a seven year itch. What do you get on your twenty first year <laughs> itch? What? What is that? Is that That's like three Herbie times Simpl- seven? Right? Is that like exactly. Herbie Simplex fourteen or something like that? <laughs> well, we did have table 14. And, That's when you switched uh, to men. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. But then, when um, he said seven years, I'm like, he's like 80 years old here. And he's like, oh, my God. And then Adrian's is like, oh, because, oh, you came to me for sex because she, they figured that uh-huh, was the reason uh-huh. why. 
And then uh, he said, no, he's like, he doesn't know her. He doesn't. And then she, she then asks, well, do you know who I am? And she, he's like, yeah, you're a sweet, warm, wonderful person who listens, gives and cares. And then she says, no, I'm your ex mistress. And she so gets up she and walks ends, out, ends it with him then. Yeah. Um, we find out here that, uh, on the port side, there will be guided tours of Puerta Vallarta. They're leaving Puerta in 10 Vallarta. minutes. Um, and I, oh. No, this we're not. Des- the, this is the night. I'm style. sorry. Yeah. I jumped over Doc in, and Jenny kiss. Yeah, yeah, Desi not- and Jenny kissing on the deck. I'm sorry. <clears throat> this is where he tells her that he's getting off in Puerta Vallarta because he's got to meet his fiance. Yeah. They're talking about, um. She even says, like, it doesn't have to be forever if they go have sex right now. She's basically just saying, saying, like, she just wants to hook up. Just for the night. Yeah. She just wants to have him. She's always loved him from uh, when they were in blind school. You you don't think that they had sex in blind school? No, I don't think they did. I don't know. He was allowing her to walk into walls a lot back then, so (laughs) it wasn't so. (laughs) When you're blind, is that funny to watch another person walk into walls? You're not (laughs) seeing them do it. You just hear the... you're the thud, you're like, Meh. I'd said, have her walk into my fingers. And here's where when it, <laughs> <laughs> I like when Brian can't reach his mute button. Yeah, he's permanently on he's right on now. now. He can't he can't do anything. Um she says like uh he she thinks that he doesn't want to be saddled with a blind woman and uh Desi's trying to say no, it's not like that. He comes out and tells her that he loves her. Um but, but he says but then he mentions that he's engaged. engaged. He's, right? He says he's engaged to a girl and Puerta Vallarta. Vallarta. And um, she just says, uh, this never happened. Let me walk into my own walls as she walks and away. And she expertly turns, whenever she says it, I don't know. It's what, coming up. I think I rushed But she today. expertly turns and walks right down The way right his hair stairs. blew in the, in the breeze there was really pretty. Too. Oh, he's got nice hair. Yeah. Well, does he do too? His dad had nice hair. As far as black and white television shows. Like, and she just she turns. She yeah. turns and walks. And she r- says, leave me alone. She gave him a one, two. Like, no problem walking down those stairs. I have problems walking down those stairs. I can see them coming. <laughs> and she definitely she, doesn't know where she's going. No. She just walks right down those stairs. I was like, wow, look at and her. we know that she messes up even just going to her room, even when she counted off the steps. That is she's true. counting the steps before, but. Well, okay, not, so that, here's, that where, yet. That, here's where they announced it. Yeah, they're uh, gonna, the guided tours. Guided tours. Puerta Vallarta. And um, we get uh, Isaac uh, making his eye opener special. Um, Bloody Marys, right? Bloody Marys, and he, they make the joke about why they use celery instead of lettuce because uh, this, the lettuce will wilt. Yeah, and uh, Alan thought that was a, a hilarious yeah. joke. We've got our two <laughs> aged gentlemen here, Dan Rowan, Rowan and uh, Rowan Lorenzo and Lamas, Lamas. <laughs> and they're both complaining about their their La- relationships. Lamas, yeah, Lamas is complaining about his wife, and then uh, Rowan says he has his uh, wife troubles of his own. And Lama says, oh, the brunette I saw you with? And he's like, no, that's my mistress. <laughs> wonk, wonk. Those look like some weak Bloody Marys. They are very light, aren't they? Yeah. You could see through them, right? You shouldn't be able to see through them. No. I've always read that like when you see people drinking like bourbon or something like that, it's iced tea or something like that. Oh, on TV. Yeah, and I've been becoming like a fan of bourbon over the last year. COVID got me into not just drinking beer all the time, so I've been drinking bourbon. Bourbon's got a certain color to it. I was watching a, a certain intergalactic Battlestar show today, and oh, they were having, and oh, they were, what um, show could that be? And they were um, drinking. He poured, he poured bourbon into their glasses, and I was like, man, that just looks like iced tea. Now I'm an expert on bourbon because I've drank it a couple would, times. Would you say so, bur- bourbon's like more of a yellowish than? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. But maybe scotch is darker. Maybe it was scotch that they were drinking. I don't know. But like it was. I mean, I guess there's all different shades, really, mm, of different things. So maybe. you kind of get. Maybe it's just yeah. my ignorance on what all the different. I mean, you look at those people that are like, what do they call them? Like. Sa- sommeliers with the like wine. Where yeah. they could, and they come like, it's very chestnut tasting. I was it's like, all I don't, bullshit. It's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's like well, it's got a malty feel. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what malt tastes like. Yeah, but it's like no, it's like got a woody. It's like a grain, like a wood. And it's like why? Why does it taste like wood? It's got a woody, this. grainy chestnut cherry flavor. Like, like no, it none, doesn't. None of those flavors <laughs> sound right. It's very. I don't know. <laughs> it tastes like bourbon. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, so these guys are lamenting over their their weak bloody man. What was me kind of thing? And then uh they uh Lamas realizes that he's happy with his uh his woman. Of seven years. Oh my no, god. No, Lamas is him. Oh Lamas. Yeah. Oh yeah. Lamas right, right, is right, happy right. with Roz. 
He should be. Yeah. He's like 50 years older than her. She is Yeah, he's got way Buddy, Buddy Epson's his little brother. <laughs> I mean, I guess he's a big deal, but like she's hot. He should not be looking for anything else. Yeah, like uh he's definitely got her because of who he was. He's Dan just he's just a regular schmo. Schmo hawk. Well, he's a lawyer. Well, he's just a regular guy. He's not like a celebrity, I mean. Right, you're right, you're right. But he's not in I mean He does smoke a nice pipe though. So, um, smoking on TV, Lorenzo Lamas' dad will die four years from here. Yeah. 82, right? 82. Um, and here's think- another, uh, Jenny, <laughs> it's Julie. I'm here to talk I'm to coming you. up behind you. <laughs> Don't punch me. Oh, look at her legs in this. <laughs> and she goes, she says, hello, Jenny. It's Julie. Steve was looking for you. And she says, uh, we talked last night and, uh, Julie gave, uh, a rose to uh, Jenny here that Desi uh, wanted her to have. He says, "Is it going to be okay?" She's like, "I'm going to go now." And she walks away. And she wa- before she walks away, she drops the rose, leaves the rose, and Lorenzo Lamas or Fernando Lamas comes by and picks it up, and he's taking that as a peace offering to Roz. Uh, and as he goes back to the cabin to talk to Roz, uh, Roz was in uh, the bathtub. Again, this is another bathtub scene. See, I don't, I didn't pick up on the first bathtub scene. I knew this one's going to happen, but, um, but here's the, uh, she walks away with slowly walks away, slowly walks away on flat land, but steps she can handle (laughs) quite quickly. Lamas gave her a a quick look, look, see over, and he sees the rose, and this is where he takes it back to, uh, Roz. Listen, nice gesture. He could have bought her a fresh rose. Although I, I guess there's probably nothing wrong with that rose. I think he was going back. He, it was just because it was there. He decided to pick yeah. it up. It did so. seem like kind of cheap, but whatever. It's a rose. It's still. Especially uh, somebody that uh, they're buying $1.2 million pieces of jewelry. <laughs> that rose should be a little more special. Um, but here we get Michelle Lee in a tub. Now, did he have to sew his penis to the his, <laughs> to face? Get that up, it was one, facing up, though. To get that diamond. <laughs> Um. Yeah. So she says the uh, he wants to join her, but the only way she, he can join is with uh, if she, he brings a rubber ducky. Remember that line? I did, I, I don't I, think he did. I don't think I picked up on that line. Now, you know who he reminds me of? Lorenzo Lamas. No, he reminds me of <laughs> Chrissy Snow's dad. Oh my! Yeah, right. It might be. D- no, it's definitely not. Cause it's not, but it's a different actor. Yeah, yeah but, but he reminds right, me of but... him. He's got like the ah, eyebrows like him after, too. So and... We gotta look that up because he was like that guy was not as well. He might have been old as old, but oh, the boat like... is now arriving in uh, Cabo, Cabo San Lucas at or no, it's going to arrive at OE hundred tomorrow morning. It says, um, and then we get the gang discussing uh, Roz and Lamas while Roz and La- uh Lorenzo or in the t- or Fernando or in the tub. Oh, right, because they're discussing. He's he about, can still listen into the room, right? Yeah, yeah. there's so a lot of real boat shots on. That's this a, definitely episode. a real boat. The shot last right week there. we had a lot. Remember, I I brought that up. We had a lot of like uh, you would outer think on shots a, of oh, it. We got a, we got Jenny reading Braille. This was where she was reading Braille, um, and that was a huge book she was reading. Oh, too. Braille Braille's big. I I got a slight Braille story. It's it's not really that important. Right, we'll I think I, in, in fact I think. A comedian even used it in his show one time. Not that he stole it from me. He didn't hear it from me. But I was at an ATM one time, a drive through ATM, and there was Braille on the numbers. And I remember just thinking, like, oh, I remember just thinking, like, too. who is like, who's going to drive up to an ATM and <laughs> use Braille? That sounds and how, very. And how are they going to know what money they that got? That sounds very dangerous. Well, I know that I know blind people fold their money differently. Like twenties are folded differently than tens. But when they come out of the ATM, I guess if you if you get like a hundred bucks, you know you're getting five twenties. But I just remember like Braille being Peter Mark Richmond. He looks a lot like right? him. Yeah, Tony. Every time I looked at him, I knew it wasn't that guy. But I wanted it to be him, though, didn't you? But I knew it wasn't him. I knew. But you wanted it to be. Well, I wanted it to be. Maybe he's on Love Boat. That guy. Chrissy Snow's grandfather or father. Mm, he a, a and he was a minister, like? minister yeah, a priest yeah. or minister. One of them, not yeah. a priest because he had a daughter. I don't know. I couldn't remember which one could have one. That's why I said both. <laughs> anyway, uh, blind ATM. Not a good, not good. No. 
Uh, I never a, understood that. I saw blind signs at, uh, at work one time too on the bath. So, so the bathroom was this way, but I was like, "How did they know that the sign to the bathroom was right there?" They just walked down the hall, <laughs> yeah, swiping so the wall at all. That's why aren't they supposed to walk, like all those signs are supposed to be at a certain height? I think probably. So then they hold the, like where their hands so they can touch it or whatnot. I'm sure if you're a blind person in an office, you the first thing you figure out is how to get to the bathroom and back. What blind song did you keep thinking of when you were watching this episode? I kept thinking of "Going Blind" by Kiss. Oh, I didn't think of any. I don't know. No, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Blinded by the light. I was gonna say "Blind Me" with science. Okay, science, yeah. science. Do 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 do. Um, all right, so we had Jenny and Desi. Um, again, Desi, this is where uh, Jenny was reading Braille. Desi broke his engagement. Uh, he got Puerto off in Puerto Vallarta. He's back on the boat Because we're in Cabo now. here yeah. now. And um, Jenny says that he made a mistake. Um, and he says, yeah, because he feels, she said something along the lines like, you know, just because she's blind, don't want to be. And he says, there's a lot of 2020 division people out there getting divorced. So her argument was moot. Did you say 2020 division? No, vision. Oh, I say division. it sounded like he said 2020 division. I, if I did, one. I apologize. 20 <laughs> divided by 20 is one, but... Um, 2020 vision. I'd also like right. to go on record as saying that if he got off in uh, Puerto Vallarta, he probably only paid for a ticket to go to Puerto Vallarta, so now he's back on the boat. So he had to pay for another ticket. I think he's a stowaway. I think no, we have another he's stowaway in a room. Here. They show him in a room after this. Oh, do they? Okay. Yeah, the, the, I think... I do you think he do you think he walked up to the, the I, boat and he said, "Can I get my?" He seems back? like he's too good of a guy that he would try to do that. Obviously, that was not a plot that they all these ten writers didn't think of. But that should have been when he got, when he got <laughs> when he got out. That was probably the end of his cruise. But somehow he got back on and did he get his room back? I don't know if he got his room. I mean, I guess that room is available unless somebody else booked it. Does anybody book a cruise halfway through? People in Puerto Vallarta, yeah, it's, like, not like that that is, that it's not like that LA. cruise is going to be back necessarily in Puerto Vallarta in five days or whatever, how long that cruise will be. So I would think that the only people, he would probably be the only kind of person that would be able to get back on. I don't think you can do that. I don't think you can just like book half a cruise. This is 78. And if he's, got the, right, if he's got the American no, Express, can't. American Express. Oh, well, anything back then, like that. American Express did anything. You'd yeah. have to book two cruises if you're going somewhere and coming back. Yeah, that's probably what he did. He probably had to book a cruise coming back, but still. And what I understand is his if he had the operation for his eyes, he should be have giant Coke bottle glasses on. <laughs> he, he should at least have to wear glasses. He, right? exactly. Well, he did have those glasses on, those he little uh, shaded ones that yeah, he was wearing, but that was it. Yeah, but nothing. What kind of operation not only made him not blind anymore? You think he should have had like uh, the, Roy Orbison, before laser. the Roy Orbison, like big. Uh, <laughs> <Yes>. uh, <laughs> I'm thinking more like the Artie Johnson. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Very interesting. Um, Listen to our episode last. So this week is where he did Johnson. the he did the fake. Uh, he faked her out here. No bad move on him. I mean, good and bad, right? Like you're. I like, mean, ah, kind of. She's pretty, blind. She's she like pretty know. sneaky. Sis. I thought he was actually going to sneak into the bathroom to f- sneak like fake her out, like go into the bathroom. Oh, that would have been scary. It's like, oh, hide in the shower. <laughs> no, sit on the toilet when she sits down. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but all he does is kind of fake that he left. And his was still facing up, so he peed on her. <laughs> uh, but she, uh, again, she's very. Um, she's now, now she's like self pitying. Like, you don't want to marry, a, you, you don't want to be with a blind girl. Like, why would you ever want to be with a blind person? And she was really hard on herself. I yeah, think, she's, know, like, she's like. My God, it's not like she's ugly and blind. And he said, he basically walked out. And <laughs> I don't understand why he wouldn't want to be. He said, what do I have to do to prove it to you? Like, go blind again? That was like his. Uh, and I was thinking, like, is this guy going to, like, is come back with, like, 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 like stick his, his eye or something like that? <laughs> another I was, outside shot. I was oh, yeah. thinking, like, is this guy going to, like, blind himself? That's like a Romeo and Juliet kind of thing. To, or not Romeo and Juliet. The, um, what's the, the, the one with the cut in the hair and the combs and the. Uh, uh, Sweeney Todd. Is that, I don't know what that is. That's the barber. That's the why barber, I thought it out. Demon barber of Seville. What's the one with, um, it's a Christmas story. The, um, oh, uh, Gift, of, Gift, 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 Gift of the Magi, oh. where she cuts her hair and to buy him something and oh, he buys great. her something for her hair, but he has to sell his something. I thought, she, I, whatever, that's stupid, but. <laughs> What's not stupid is what I, I thought he was going to blind himself just to. Like, I thought that too for a second, but I was like, no, I don't know. Or at least fake it. At least come back and be like, hey, I'm guess blind. what happened? 
I, I, I went outside and stared at the sun for 20 minutes. Now I am blind. <laughs> and what was she going to do? Call him on it? No, you're not. He's like, watch me bump into this wall. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I can't watch you bump into the wall. <laughs> Here we get Doc pacing outside of uh, Roz and- He's um, on guard. Roz and uh, Fernando's uh, room. And Captain comes over, gives him uh, another warning, I guess, basically. Uh, Stay on guard there, Bricka. And then Doc made the joke here. He said, eight years in college and medical school, and I could be replaced by a German shepherd. <laughs> Six years of college down the drain. I should have joined and the then, fucking Peace so then Corps. Steubing comes back at him. He says, there'll be an extra milk bone in your pay package. <laughs> say that. In your pay envelope. <laughs> and then now Taffy now, arrives. My my brain went into hyperactive Fox, overdrive here. here with... I think last week or the week before we discussed the very, you can keep it going. Nothing's well, happening here. The very real possibility <laughs> there's a porno out there dedicated to the love boat. Now she comes up to him, macking all over him, doc here. Yeah. And so they, they she, she takes him away. He's yeah. going to walk away with. So her. now he's off guard and gopher comes walking by. He's like, Hey, Stand here for five minutes and watch the door. Yep, and, then and she, now she wants to come back. Then to the she door, comes yeah. back and grabs go, and she says to each one, "You know, Doc, look how rough Doc was. Oh yeah, just grabbing He's like, her. She is mine now. I'm thinking she should just be like threesome. Let's let's go to one and of then, your rooms. And then Doc was like this. He basically pointed at the door for Gopher. Like, that is and your job now. He, I guess Doc she has looks rank. Incredible. Yeah, yeah. Those stuff. white shorts, man, and the the tight Ooh. top. And, and then now shoes, she she uh, just basically walks Doc around the corner, and then comes right back to Gopher. Doc is like you are there and see <laughs> everything around the corner. She's like you're the sexiest one on this boat. So I really thought if this was done in this day and age, not even in a porno, but in 2021, she would have been like. Why don't you guys but both then come back get, to my room? Then there was some action there, too. She, she actually She's started kissing Making out with so, Gopher yeah. for a little bit, yeah. But um, um, here we get uh, Gould and Ox. We find them up in the... Uh, we, get, up in the <laughs> we get Tom Cruise. Oh, my God. This is, right. we get, this is great because he didn't see... <laughs> we get Tom Cruise and the professional here walking through the air ducts in Mission Impossible 1. First, look how big those ducks are. They could stand Andy. up. They're they so well up. lit, too. Yeah, they could stand up in those things. That's why I'm saying the boat would be a thousand stories tall if all the air ducks were but this Brian, boat. it gets better. It gets better here. So, so based on a, the fact that you've watched <laughs> Ox and Gould through this entire episode, you would think that. Ox is a lot bigger the, than the him. The heavier guy would stay up. Ox has to have him by about 80 pounds. At least 80 pounds. Gould had to wear a fat suit just to do stooping, and stooping is not fat. <laughs> And Plus now he's, he's at least 70 years old. Right. Yeah. So, of course, it's going to make sense that they're going to lower the big burly guy down <laughs> to uh, steal the diamond. And there's really no explanation at this point why he can't. Like, they're doing. I mean, this yeah. is almost so out of Mission he's Impossible. Holding which him would be here. 20 years later, but. And he was on his knee. Hit, like, yeah, look he's, how. He's hanging now, here. Now look why look how he, big the ceiling now is. Now, why doesn't he just let him <laughs> go to the, the floor? floor. The, the floor is not wired. It's not he, lava. He, he, he can the floor stay. is not lava but, here. And Gopher's still making out with, with uh, what's her name? Taffy. We see all but kinds of knocks. He pulls him up. Yep. He's swimming. I don't know why he's <laughs> swimming all of a sudden. Uh, well, but he can't, he can't walk, so he reaches over to get the... He pulls him back. He knocks over the couch on he the next one. He did knock over the couch. But it's it made fine. like a it's loud noise up. though, and everything, because Gopher's like, "What was that noise?" Um, so he makes the switch. He's got both in his hands. He knows which one. Now, of course, you know what's going to happen. Some more right? hijinks here. You know he's going to drop him and mess up which ones. He's not going to know which ones which. The fact that he drops him here. Keep an eye on how this happens real fast, but keep watching here as he pulls him up. This is um. So he doesn't know which Very one's strategic which. strategic here. So he's just going to be like, all right, that's the fake one. He's almost like, uh, eeny, meeny, miny, yeah, moe. totally eeny, me. And he's like, he's like I'm ready up. to go. Watch this. He. Look how fast he pulled him definitely, up. Oh definitely God. yanks him up. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you're a, a, an experienced jewel thief and you want to make sure everything goes right, you know you should be the one going down there. Regardless of the fact that you're 100 pounds lighter than the other guy, and it would be much easier for him to pull you up. They could turn around next to each other inside the. They don't have to. The they don't have to duck. They could be standing up next to each other in that. So they get back to the room here. Mm, 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 look at Taffy. Wow. Man. Wow. 
you know, they, they had missed an opportunity with Doc and Gopher saying they were going to pull some taffy at some point. If they, <laughs> they, missed, <laughs> they also missed an opportunity having taffy come back on this boat. Like, what was she doing? Was she never on this episode again? Her only episode. And what was she in besides this? Room 222. I think uh, I might have two, to check two, it out. Two. I'm not watching that, but. I don't even know. Is that a school one? Were they in school? I have like, no idea what Room 222 is. Um. So now they're all like. So here they're so, all. So Ox is checking his pocket for the diamonds. Uh, uh-oh, uh-oh, oh How many times did it seem like he checked the back and he, pocket? And he did not check that pocket. Watch. He tapped, he topped left front. Think about it, Ox. Keep thinking. Left and left front and back. Right front, back and back and forth, and then all of a sudden the realization. Yeah, and and Gould even says, "Think about it, Ox," and he pulls out the diamond. He did it. He did it. And then there's all kinds of talk about um, how they're going to split it up. It's going four ways. And then he says, um, "What do you say? A ruby has fire, an emerald has depth. Diamond shines through them all." Uh, pure, brilliant, hard, and uh, we get Jenny. Jenny walks in. Walks in. I, I want to see her room number. What does she say her room number is? Um, she says her room number is three fifty two. They're in two forty two. She says her room number is three fifty two. Can you see anything there? Yeah, three fifty four. So yeah. So did they have a different room? I don't know. Maybe they had multiple rooms to four maybe, of them. Maybe, maybe. Possibly. Maybe. So she is on the right. That's correct. She's right. Yeah. Wrong. Right. Wrong. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So she Crutches, said she, funny story. Keen. Sad story. <laughs> Taffy was going to walk her down to her room, but she said she got it because it was just the next room over. Um but, but then it they, did set up that drama of like, oh my God, because so, he was holding the diamond up like I'll, that. But oh my first, God. And I wanted to mention that too. You stole a diamond. You're gonna hold it up like this. It's like luckily what, what? the person that walked in was blind and not see us. And now he says the uh, the way to prove it's a real diamond is uh, he's gonna it cuts, put his, it cuts he's gonna mirrors. put his signature in the mirror. So he's gonna sign his name onto a mirror that's gonna stay in the cabin. That's so gonna as if say evidence, who did this. Yeah, as if evidence to say like, look what I carved I, in this. I mirror. stole your one point five million dollar. Um, but as he's uh, typing or. Er, typing as he's writing the name out nothing happens except the diamond shatters and is nothing in his hands it just it looks like uh just shatters, rock candy like, or something like that yeah. and so now we know that or now we think that he grabbed the wrong one now with only like 25 minutes left in the episode we we're about to get to our masquerade party too Oh my god! How long is this? Up? This has been going on for an hour and fourteen minutes. Is Ox smarter than he seems, or no? I'm not. I don't think Ox is smart at all. No. Oh, okay. But why did he like? From what you've seen, what, he, what would you say Ox is? <laughs> I was thinking maybe he's fooling them, and he's sw- he swapped out. No. Two at next. Oh wow! Oh, yeah, I didn't that's think about that. That's, uh, that's good. That's not. That's, what that's, that's another one of his uh, theories there. Dan. That's yeah. a good theory, though. We get a uh, Barb and uh, Adrian are sitting here and they're talking, having a good time. And uh, Adrian offers a light to Barb for her cigarette, and she takes out her wallet and I guess like a picture is there. She's like, "Oh, is this you?" And in the picture is her with the guy, Barb's husband, uh, Alan. Uh, and so she figures out that she's the the mistress and that she's the wife who found the tickets. She puts all that together and she's like is this hawaii he was supposed to take me and i couldn't go at the last minute and then we see uh adrian follows after her uh walks after her and uh they basically uh have a little conversation i'm sorry kind of you know and uh she's talking to her and adrian's saying that it's over between her and alan that um adrian uh says that all her all alan wants is her and she can prove that, and she says there is still a way to prove that, and that's when they come up with the idea. Let's do, let's trick him or something. They say there's a plan, there's right? A plan, and they, but, but they're they saying that Alan wants his wife. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. And then the plan, they, you don't hear the plan. It's one of those when they TV tropes where they walk off whispering the plan to each other, and there's music or whatever playing in the background. We've got a plan. Dun dun dun. <laughs> Commercial time. Like what? What is the plan, though? I don't know. <laughs> if we just do it now, she you said, wouldn't have to show it to us later. She finds out, like, were you at the New York convention with him? 
Uh, she mentions divorcing or killing him first. Um, she says, kill him first. Some, was then it just divorce. someone? Was it just someone to go to bed with? And she says, I needed him. I didn't love him. I needed him. That's what Adrian said. She was with him for. It was just the right time to like help her through her divorce, I guess. Um, and the sex was just bonus. Bonus. I mean, when you're uh, no Adrian, cares. When you're Adrian Barbeau, Andy, not a big fan of Adrian Barbeau. I am. Eh, she's what, all right. What do you think? I think she's very uh, attractive. I mean, you don't do 120 some episodes of Maud. B. Arthur did. No, she did them all. She oh, did 120 man. some. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, you said, "I'm stopping now. Or I'm going to turn ugly. I'm going to look like B. Arthur. <laughs> like I've had enough of this." <laughs> B, I love you. Come on our show. Uh, R.I.P. B. R.I.P. Or IPB. Right? <laughs> was that a Ryan Reynolds movie? RIPD, right? Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. I never saw that one. I nor did yeah. I. Um, this is a long exchange between them. I They're know still I, talking. I, I walked over. Yeah. Yeah. We have we finished <laughs> summing this up five minutes ago. They're gonna eventually say, let's trick him into proving that he yeah, loved Yeah, there wasn't even really any good lines. It was just like I guess it took her a while to get to like, oh, I was at the convention with him. Oh yeah, and should I kill him? Oh it's amazing when we're talking through these scenes how but some she of them says just it's her go fault on too. She said she was busy. So long. She said she was busy. This is where she admits that it was kind of her fault too. Because she was busy. Of course it's her fault. She's the wife. <laughs> it's never the man's fault. I was listening to one of our earlier episodes, the Virgins one, and there's a that part. Was one of our very first, is, and there's a part in there where like we just stopped talking. We're like, oh, they're still talking, okay, and, and we and we're talking about something else. And then five minutes later, we're like, they're still talking. Like, what is going on in this scene? This is what this scene's like. They've been talking for like five minutes. I know. I had a bit of notes, but I went through them really fast. Yeah, because I mean, it it's not, nothing matters. No one cares. Too busy. I mean, it's almost as long as your HR rant. I really didn't think it was this long of um, an explanation because now we only have. Uh, <laughs> They've cut into our masquerade time. We've only got twenty-one minutes left, and this is where they ha- hatched their plan, right? Um. So, let me get Taffy again. Oh, she's such a dream. Um. So when it all comes down to it, there's four shows. There's four stories. What's the one that's masquerade? Which one is that? There is no real story there, I don't think. Um, like it's like I think we got confused because like the diamond thieves and the masquerade <laughs> is because of the and the and the they uh, do have the we'll get to it, but no, they no, have no the, the masquerade party, but like like that's when they the have they diamond try to steal again. The there. diamond thieves are separate from the Michelle Lee story, but yeah. I, I in my mind they're all one story, but I think they're that's a separate story. Ox comes back to the gang here when they were all sitting around and he says that he saw Roz and uh, he snuck up on Roz wow. actually. And he uh, said he that she, he said that she, over. he had the uh, necklace. She had the necklace on and he took a, and he took a, pic, a picture of her is what he said. Uh, so he has a Polaroid showing her that they all thought that maybe he had snatched the diamond off of her, but that wasn't the case. So, um, Ox letting everybody down here. <laughs> That's a really sexy picture of so, Michelle Lee. But well, she was just laying out at the pool, and he creeped up on her and took the picture of her. But this <laughs> was also where Plan C was ruined. So they came up with Plan D there. What, what was C? Up. C was it? Oh, C was the Mission Impossible. Yeah. One. Right, 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 right. D is what's coming up next. D is uh, what's coming up next. Here we get um, now Julie, Isaac, Gopher, and Doc. W- w- wouldn't you think that there'd be other guys that make deliveries here? <laughs> Not on a love boat. Like, why would they? Who's serving drinks up on the Lido deck right now? Who is her- fixing um, that little boy's arm <laughs> from the slide as he went into the pool? There because there was suntan lotion. There are people down on the purser's sun- desk right now. Like, what am I doing in Cabo today? Like, I want to know. I want to do something. But where's yeah. the purser? So she, the figures, assistant person. she figures out that the roses are from Desi, and this is where Desi's in another his room again. So he was in the same room if she knew where to go. Good call. Good call. Um, so she shows up in his room here, and, and she, basically she's talking to the wall right now, and he has to turn her around and say, "I'm over here." <laughs> we missed the when the when it came in with the roses was the solitaire. We forgot to. Mention oh, she's a, playing solitaire. I saw so that on the t- with, with that with the non braille cards. Non braille cards. Yeah. So that. That took us out of this whole story completely. Did you ever watch that documentary with the blind guy with the cards and he could like do card tricks? I don't think so. Oh, it was really good. It was on something. Hulu Netflix, something like that. Hulu Flicks? 
And I mean, he wasn't born blind. He had Hulu gone Flicks blind. Prime. He would like. She tries to do the same trick here with him, but it actually made me laugh. Oh, I, I laughed too. A, she fakes that she left, but obviously. And she says, that, why didn't that cheap trick work for me? She and said then, cheap trick. Yeah, and then they yeah. started playing. It was like, <laughs> your mom is all right. Your dad is all right. <laughs> they did not play cheap trick, but she said cheap trick. I'm like, oh, nice. She said, we could listen to the Led Zeppelin, she said. The Led Zeppelin. <laughs> Those crazy, the Led Zeppelins. <laughs> Is this the, so the masquerade uh, start ball. of the masquerade Man, ball? Here, here we, we go. Best part Alan of the show. As, Alan as Dracula, um, Barb as Marie Antoinette. Although that's the, subti- Kate. the subtitle like says Mary. Mary Antoinette. Yeah, I looked at that too. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, is she saying it wrong? Or are they just typing I, and it I wrong? And I tried listening to it too. It was Marie. She was saying Mary, like Marie, 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 Marie. Marie. Or something like that. Yeah. Um, Old Mary. She said Antoinette. she forgot her purse, and she says to go on into the party, and uh, she'll meet up. Uh, with uh, him and uh, Carol, and Carol is dressed as a clown, Marcel Marceau type clown, which is a mime, I think, right? Yep. And he says, "I guess I'll go bite her neck." What can she say? Because she's a mime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Isaac here is the White Rabbit, also as the he says Honky Rabbit. Yeah, <laughs> Honky Rabbit. He says he's the White Rabbit, also known as the Honky Rabbit. Love it. It was so much fun, and it just skipped over. That's it. It's not there. And, no and, more, and, yeah. and Lorenzo Lamas just laughs and walks away like honkies. <laughs> Those stupid honkies. We get Gopher <laughs> who shows up here. He's dressed as uh, Rudolph Valentino, the greatest lover in the world. And um, I'm supposed to, I'm surprised at, they didn't come as Humphrey Bogart. We know he loves. He's I a big that bogey too. guy. Yeah. Like, so he says uh, he's the greatest lover in the world. And then uh, Isaac says, "Boy, you don't know anything about rabbits," <laughs> which I thought was funny. <laughs> Good joke. <laughs> And let's look at Cleopatra walking. Julie, in. Yeah, this is Cleopatra. Out of hand. That that stomach is amazing. <laughs> and uh, Doc Bricker is um, Prince Charming. Is that and Julie? She wishes, yeah, she Damn. wishes. She wishes. She wishes Prince Charming luck. And he says he has a shoe that uh, is one size fits all, so oh, he can't nice. miss. Yeah. And he goes right up to talk to Gopher. Oh no, not that size. Uh, he comes up. What's up, Doc? That's what he says. To he the, takes out a carrot. Yeah, so he's chopping out a carrot. So here comes our gang. We got. He called Doc a shoe salesperson. That was funny. So Steubing's what? Like King Henry VIII or, or something yeah. like that? Yeah. He was just, he just said majesty. So he didn't yeah. really say what king he was, I guess. But if it was part of the Marie Antoinette theme. Well. <laughs> why would that be part of the theme? France that and England? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, no but, okay. So here, this is where. Uh, this is where uh, he called Doc a um, a shoe salesman. He's he's just like a shoe sale shoe salesman. Shoe sales. She sells seashells, and uh, once again, uh, Steubing asks him to keep an eye on the uh, diamond. But uh, Kathy shows up in costume here, and she starts teasing Alan. Um, so he realizes that that's um that that's uh Adrian, and then she walks away, and she runs down the hallway. And guess who's dressed as Marie Antoinette, or uh, is dressed as uh, no longer as Marie Antoinette, but in the, the same client. costume. Oh. So that was their, uh, that's their plan. They're doing the bait switch. And switch. They're yeah. doing the bait and switch, yep. So, um, what do we got here? So, so they're talking about the lights are going to get cut out at 11 right, o'clock. Mur- yeah, he said, I thought there wasn't going to be any murders, boss. Oh, right, kill the lights, yep. And uh, so now Barbara comes in to talk to Rowan and Martin. Yep. Barb. Uh, and he thinks it's Barbara. Yep. Alan still thinks Wait, it's Kathy. No, it's Kathy, right. And uh, he tells, uh, you know, Kathy that he loves Barbara. Um, and she takes him outside. Um, he's, he's, he continues saying that he doesn't want to lose her. Um, he's talking about how um, he had, he really wants to s- spend more time with uh, Barb and get to know her. But that's who he wants to be with his wife. He doesn't want to be with Kathy. And he says during this, he says to Kathy, thinking that it's still Kathy, you know, that they were done. Oh, you said we were done. So then he he basically is admitting to his wife that that they're done. That they're done. I don't know anything about Rowan, like his life or livelihood. I mean, I mean, what what he was all about. But man, he's got the bloodshottest eyes, man. Like his eyes are red. You really see it with that <laughs> with makeup that green on too. face yeah. paint on. So I'm like, man, I'm like, 
was it just the makeup irritating his eyes or is he a big stinky drunk and his eyes are just and this, is, and this could be in that stage of his career where like Martin Lanfin's done and he's just like what am I doing you know he's just spiraling out of control but his eyes didn't meanwhile he's probably like news. he's probably doing great at this time in his life but we're like we're sitting on him right now he'll be dead in 10 years so did not, you look him up does he, that dies, he, died? he dies in 87 okay. yeah so now he gets away scot free just like all the other husbands that cheat that's yeah so that's 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 what comes up here she basically says yeah they're gonna stay together he says that i love my wife and then she's like i am your wife i am your wife and he's like oh baby and he's like oh so you know about it now blah 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 i'll never cheat on you again but once a cheater always a cheater that's what they cheat say. Again. barb confirms that she knew about the affair and uh they kiss and make up basically at at the end of this scene here which is just that's uh, really extravagant makeup to put on for like again we've talked about this before when they had the like the talent show and stuff did he bring a dracula costume with him <laughs> on board knowing that he was for like, this trip i guess did we, they bring two identical clown it wasn't around on? halloween so it wasn't like no. a halloween uh themed episode this was uh like would it be something like hey on our cruise, don't forget we're going to have a masquerade party. When you're booking this cruise, they let you know to bring a costume. Maybe. Or, I mean, like the crew, I'm sure I'm sure Isaac just has that rabbit costume in his room. Like, you know, every Halloween, the rabbit, the rabbit costume is that? The honky rabbit. <laughs> As a honky, I'm offended by that. I don't, I don't, I'm not offended. I, I've never heard the term honky used outside of like 70s Jefferson's. TV. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, George Jefferson used it. Um it was used that on. Might uh, be it. it was used on uh, all in the family. All, probably. Well, all in the yeah. family, probably by George Jefferson, yeah. but different George Jefferson, different or his yeah. her brother, yeah, it Carl, yeah, Lionel, Carl, Carl, Carlson, yeah. But um, Lionel was the son. Yeah, it was like kind of like a TV. Like no regular person in the world uses the term honky. I've never been called honky. No, I never have either. And I don't think anybody would use it in a negative way. It doesn't feel like it's, it doesn't feel like. I would laugh. Like, so yeah. I'm I'm like, that's great. I'm like, that's a good one. I was like, that's it. Um, so, uh, is that Cleopatra again? Jenny and, Jenny and, uh, yeah. Desi. So he, she's, um, so here's uh, where wait, my next, she? she was, here's where my next plot. Oh, Jenny is in, justice yeah. and he's lady justice. Desi is, because her just, prisoner of love, justice is blind. So you get it, yeah. Justice and is he's blind. He's a prisoner of justice. love, and Jenny uh, overhears Roz and Lorenzo talking about like you know, oh, we got money and like all the having money, having all these extravagant items, now uh, houses and stuff like that. And it was at this point that I knew what was happening next. She overheard them. The lights were going to come out at eleven. She was going to hear who stole the diamond in the dark. I was convinced that was happening. That was the next plot point that I was like, oh, but she's overhearing them. She's going to hear who gonna, did it. Yeah. But, but um, spoiler, so that's not what happens. Desi comes back over and she says she overheard that conversation. And as she's saying, don't, I hope that that's what our relationship is never like that. You know, but they she want says it, it loud enough that they, they hear, hear her, they talking. hear her talking about them. She's like, I heard these people and blah 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 blah. Everything she's talking and about, they know that it's they about them, it, yep. and they get a little. I don't know. They didn't seem to get offended, but they were just like they were almost like embarrassed like, of their like, embarrassment. Like, what, of what have we become? Yeah, yeah like they're uh, embarrassed by the way they were acting, basically. And um, so Michelle Lee and Chrissy Snow's father, but not good. There was a weird leave. part right before this too. Uh, this is going to be a right Titanic actually yeah. type deal, is it? What's that? The old lady in the Titanic. Right here. Uh, Larry <laughs> Stewart, the Indian walks, the guy dressed as an Indian walks by, and Larry Stewart says to him, he said, I never liked John Wayne. John Wayne, I never liked John Wayne. <laughs> Was John Wayne a known Indian the great killer? Throw I guy dressed like Westerns <laughs> and stuff like that. But So Taffy is waving at Doc and Gopher here. So it's almost 11 And then Roz asks about Jenny, <laughs> and Doc says, it's a shame she's blind. It was like, Damn, like you just gotta Damn. pull her out like that. Like <laughs> now, this is look at how what she's wearing. And then Ross says she's better than we do. So now she's gonna go Oh, she looks ridiculous. She's here, gonna go make sure that like girl. Yeah, yeah. And what did you say? She was supposed to be um, uh Daisy May from Little Daisy Abner, May, yeah. I think. Yeah. But she's gonna make sure that Doc and Gopher aren't there. 
why it's important to not have them there, I'm not quite sure why. Yeah, she has them both go to the fantail. Fantail in five minutes, yeah, both of them. Again, good time for a threesome here. She should have just walked up to both of them and said, <laughs> you, let's you, go. You, and I guarantee you, Doc and Gopher have had to have Let me, uh, Doc has some been, devil's been, triangles. You know what I mean? <laughs> Doc <laughs> has been in many threesomes. The devil's the triangle. triangle. I think that's what it's all, guys. Yeah, isn't the Devil's Triangle where they do the? I don't know. I think that was the Eiffel Tower. It, is that the Eiffel Tower? I don't know. What? Am I wrong? <laughs> I think a uh, uh, Devil Devil's threesome is when there's two guys, one girl. Oh, so I was right then. Okay. I don't know what you're doing over there in Paris. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is the Eiffel Tower. Oh, here we go. Lights guys. out. Lights are two out. Guys, like clap hands over. Oh yeah. yeah. So the lights went out. Lights are out. Stubing was standing next to uh, Roz Probably, to yeah, so. protect the diamond, and Stubing's Stubing shirt. Goes, Who took my medallion? Shirt and his medallion <laughs> ripped off. <laughs> Ox. And uh, so here they are. Um, it would have been so much better if uh, Vernon and uh, if, if Gould came to the the party as Captain Stubing. Look, because <laughs> you know he's got the costume already. He uh he realizes he grabbed the medallion. He throws it down. Uh, Ox picks it up and says he likes it. He it's says it's pretty, pretty nice. <laughs> so he liked it. And um, <laughs> so now they're like, "What do we do now? What's Plan A?" Roz and the they 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 they're basically thinking, uh, we lost it again." And uh, at the, as this time, Roz and uh, Lorenzo Lamas realize walk out and they're they're standing in front of them at the rail like they didn't even see them yeah. there and they're just having a conversation about what are they doing talking a bit again about how ridiculous they are now brian has already called out what's going to happen here i'm going to i'm going to say the phrase to you and you're going to look at me going like i'm going to you're going to like what like this is the heart of the ocean this is the end of the titanic right here the movie the titanic or just titanic and they're going to do exactly what happened in that. But you have no idea what that means because you never saw Titanic. Well, I never saw it either, but I know that that happened. Okay, so. Anyway. All I know is like he stands at the front of this. This is my ship. King of the world. King of the world. This yeah. is my ship. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized Lorenzo Lamas is dressed. I don't know why it sounded right. This Lorenzo is Lamas ship. is dressed as Napoleon. Gould is dressed as Caesar. You got. King Henry the Eighth. You got Cleopatra. I you got a lot the of, eighth I you got a lot of foreign Henry leaders. The Eighth I M I N. That was my Peter Noon. Peter Noon. They're they're looking like they're getting ready to attack. They're them. right behind them, and they don't seem to realize that there are four people just lurking. They, they right were behind right them. on top of them. They're as close as we are right here. That's how close <laughs> yeah. they are. I mean, it's like. And they're like, "Should we do it? Let's do it." Storch is eating popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> Is he waiting for something to happen? He's like, all right, all right. And um, she chucks it over. No, he he ends up chucking it over. Does he throw it over? Okay. He says, let me do it. And he says, this is my boat. <laughs> oh, no. He says, king of the world. Sorry. And they all run up like, they run up no. Like, it almost looks like it's another Bon Voyage. Bon Voyage. <laughs> <laughs> So that's it. There goes the heart of the and ocean. A kiss. There goes the cashmere. That's one point five million dollars thrown into the ocean. Did it? One point five million dollars in this this day and age. With that, what's that? They like, could have donated that to charity. You know what would have been a good thing to donate that to? The like some kind of school. blind school or something like oh, that. Yeah, yeah because they're they, they, she's they, the one they, who made them realize it. Oh my god! And here's yeah, Gopher crazy. and Doc sitting on the the and, fin. The, and then they say, "We'll wait another five minutes." Yeah. I go, what are they doing? <laughs> They really thought that they, cold. Taffy it's looked Mexico at, no. in the summer. But then again, if Taffy told me to wait there, I probably would have waited a few more. Minutes. But not if another guy was there too. I'd be like, all right, I guess he's taking you. I came in second. I would always think I'm in second. Not I know, to, but I would stick around long enough dock. to make sure I was definitely in second. Yeah. Like, you sure it's not happening? <laughs> all right, we're into L.A. or wherever we get to San Pedro. San Pedro. And uh, uh, uh. <laughs> So now, right, so yeah, so here we get. Uh, girls are cool with each other. Babs is thanking Kathy. You know, it worked. You know, we tricked them. You know, and she's saying keep in touch. Uh, they have. Ter- uh, they found out the one thing about him: he has terrific taste in woman. 
And he's saying to her, but he like, says he has a better taste than wives. I'll always yeah. think of you when I'm banging my wife or something like that. <laughs> well, she wanted basically that, that, he asked her earlier. Up, remember, yeah, he came up, yeah. Are you thinking about her or whatever? <laughs> Not in those words, the I'm, way Andy said it. I'm <laughs> surprised Adrian Barbeau didn't hook up with someone quick here at the end. There's only three minutes left. Like, but why didn't Doc say, hey? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, you're wasting your time with that old dude? He's like, I'm at least 20 years younger than him. Like, the, she's, she should have looked over at the fan tail and said, is that Doc, Doc and Gopher? So now here comes our gang without Ox. Where's Ox? This is a good question. Where's Ox? Because I was wondering that same thing. And Isaac says, oh, and Ox left already. Guess who, guess who picked him up? Who? His chauffeur. And Ox says, Ox says, or Isaac says, Ox couldn't decide between his Malibu, Malibu Beach, house, Beach House, the penthouse in town, or take the jet to the ranch. And they're all like, Ox is rich. And then what do we get after that? Plan motherfucking E. <laughs> but easy I, E. I, I, this, is, this is total bullshit because there's no setup to this at all. And there's no resolution to it either. Like, they don't find Ox. Like, couldn't so have made it why? at least he caught the diamond when it came right. over to Rayleigh. That's what I been, thought. At, it was at the very be. least, they should have been like Ox had the diamond the whole time. But as we know, as we know, as we know right now, the diamond was, was fake. fake. They didn't bring the real diamond. It's in a safe deposit box in Switzerland. They, they would never bring it on. The, they would never bring it on the ship. But so they, basically, all the shit we said in the beginning. When like, they, what are you doing, bringing this on here for? Yeah. And why would they put it in the vault? Yeah. Why they put it in the vault to protect a piece of rock they had, candy? They had to keep up the scheme that much. Yeah, I guess. You know I mean? But like, who cares? Oh, this isn't even. This is the blind couple. Anyway, I was. I thought it was the other guys, but uh, this is anyway. They're, they're getting. They're going to get married. Yeah, she said, oh, "Did okay. he propose to you when you're getting married?" And he's like, "No, she it was proposed the other way to around. me." Yeah. And, we're and he married. said, "Yes, they're going to get married." So anyway, the diamonds safe somewhere, but they are going to donate it to charity and, and they're donating to the blind, to the blind school. school. Oh. Yeah, so you got. They did get a little bit. Uh-huh. Like, yeah, he's like, "You should have did this," and they did. <laughs> so they're donating the money to the blind school, but they didn't actually throw the diamond and then, the uh, Roz says, I'll see you in the movies. And as they're walking away, uh, Stu Bing had a nice line. He says, those two really are stars. Uh, that nice. So that's it, right? That's the end of this episode. Yeah. And you know what that means, right? It's time oh. to talk about next week's episode. <laughs> we just did a two-hour episode, man. I mean, I know, a two, but the gonna... two-hour Love Boat episode is five hours. But don't you want to find out if I, uh, I Robert Yurick is in this episode or not? You could have waited until yeah, after I did get this, up. Man. Why are you getting up? I have to hit the button. What the? the <laughs> oh, oh, you fucking... step on my dog? But it'll it'll get edited out. Now all this stuff you have to edit out, <laughs> like rather than <laughs> Chucky screaming. Poor Chucky. <laughs> He's like, I was just over here sleeping. Poor Chuck. You're good. You're good. Okay, now I'm ready. All right. So our oh. next week's guest, unbelievable. unbelievable. Next week's guest, Scatman Crothers. Oh wow. Oh, from Shining. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I was just watching Gra- the Shining Graham this morning. Jarvis. If you see his face, you know him. Graham Jarvis. Graham Jarvis. You've seen him sure. in a bunch yep. of stuff. Um, Vicky Lawrence. Okay. Maureen McCormick. Again. Marsha again. Uh, um, Bobby Sherman. The singer. Dick Van Patten. Dick Van Patten. Not as and He's, the he's on his congressman, John Whitcomb. Okay. And then Vernie Watson, some uh, lady. I've, we've seen her in something. And this is one who's probably not listed because it, you know how it's alphabetical order? Okay. So they do alphabetical order, and then it's usually the, uh, the bit players or players that became somebody later. Oh, Priscilla okay. Barnes. Terry. So we get Priscilla Barnes. Yes, yeah, be a fun one. Priscilla right. Barnes along with... Uh, Marie McCormick, Vicky Lawrence should be fun. That's a better cast than this cast. Yeah, but, but this was a good two parter. I enjoyed. It was this. fine. Yeah, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. Exciting and new is the is the exciting new podcast dot com. Exciting and new podcast dot com. We're also on YouTube. Subscribe to all of them. I'm Jason Jazu seventy four at Twitter. I'm Andy. And I'm Brian. And that's Chucky. Ah, oh, Chucky.